So these things were on a flash sale on, I forget, some site. And since I've been futzing with Delta printers for a while, I thought I would see what futzing with a Cartesian printer is like. Instructions for assembly of the Ender 3 Pro 3D printer. So, this is what you get in the box. A little instruction manual with a parts list and IKEA furniture style instructions. I guarantee it has a magnetic bed and there are some 2020 rails. The electronics are here. That's a fairly nice knob, but the, uh, the board itself is kind of exposed there. Not the end of the world, but let's see. Okay, well, that is what looks to be like a well-protected, reasonably well-protected power supply. At least much better than the um, cheap Chinese Delta that I've been working on. Although it does come set by default for 230 volts, so make sure that you check when you unpack it if that's not your preferred voltage. So that's the top piece there. It comes with what looks like a spool holder. Yeah. Power cord for... Okay, so... Okay, yeah, whatever. Um, North American plug, but the power supply set for 230. Uh, okay, there's our stepper motor uh, for our... Probably our Z-axis. A couple more pieces of 2020 extrusion. And the lead screw and a lead screw what looks to be protector. Good. Spatula for lifting print. It's like a little tool, bar, tool kit of some sort. Oh my gosh, look at that. They even give you uh, some wire cutters. That <laughs> yeah, well, disposable wire cutters, let's call them. And some tools. And a bag of hardwares with bags of hardwares in there. This would be for the Z-axis as well. Is that bolted? No, that's a little tiny bit of filament and some other pieces and bits. Uh, what exactly do we have in terms of pieces and bits? Looks like it could be a belt tensioner, limit switches, yeah, some filament, SD, probably instructions, nozzle, and some belts, some in stop covers, hardware, some more hardware, some more hardware, and some more hardware. Lots of hardware. And is there anything underneath here? Nope, that's it. All right. So let's start um, seeing if we can uh, put the IKEA directions together after. Of course, petting the cat. Okay, so it looks like it comes with the hot end already installed. Um, and it does have a Bowden tube. And it has a couple of these, um, the typical, what you call it, um, cinch brackets to attach your Bowden to it. It has a cooling fan which is a blower style um, 4010. And then it has the hot end cooling fan. I would prefer it if there was some exit ducting. I'm not sure if that's exactly the most efficient way of cooling your hot end here. Um, but we'll see how it works. So the hot end's already installed. A wiring harness that includes cable labels for our extruder, our X and our Y axes. Step one is put the vertical pieces on. Okay, we can tell by the, um, by the drills. As in typical IKEA instruction fashions, we have to be careful what the drills 
look like on our various pieces of 2020 are. It's a little hard to see, but they have, these pieces are 2040. We need to be cognizant of the distance of these holes. They mention shorter on one side, longer. So more distance up here, less distance up here. And they mention shorter distance here. And we need four M5 by 45s. And are they labeled? Yes, they are. M5 by 45s. So let's slap the, those guys on there. Next steps mount the power supply, and they do remind you to correct mains voltage. You know what I didn't do is I didn't check who makes this power supply. But it, it feels pretty solid. Well, you look at that. It's a Meanwell. It's a Meanwell LRS 350, 24, so 24 volts. Or no, uh, yeah, 24 volts at 14 amps. That is nice. And um, those look like good, good crimps uh, on the connectors. Um, that's impressive. That's a good sign. Okay, next is the limit switch mechanism. Okay, so these guys are the usual drop in that foot sits there. Okay, Z axis and Z uh, lead screw goes on next. Okay, now it's time to build the, um, what are we going to call that? The Y-axis or the X-axis? But anyways, whatever carries the extruder. Carriage. Let's call it carriage. So, there are two lengths on this, and the short length goes there, and then we mount this like this, and then there is access holes through here for the heads of these screws. It's a little bit of a complicated a complicated assembly, but yeah, just deal with it. Then on to the other end goes this guy. Once again, and four by sixteens. And now for some belt. Drop our hot end on. Uh, hang on a second here. Let's be a little bit careful about where that cabling is going. How about... And why you don't want to... Uh, There we go. Just have to coax it on there. And now we've got a working that axis. And now we plop the uh, cross member on and I think we're done. More or less. Okay, so we put our Bowden tube in with our little clip to um, keep it secure. Then we've got our extruder cable. We've got our 
X end stop, and we've got our X uh, motor connected. And then we need to connect our Y motor. We're calling it, no, Z motor. Right, of course that's the Z motor. And where is our Z end stop cable? Must be around somewhere. That is so much easier a build than the um, than the Delta. Holy smokes! Like unbelievably easier. The next is powering it up and commissioning it. Okay, so it uses micro SD, which is kind of fiddly to transfer files over to the printer, but uh, I'm. I could see myself replacing the uh, the board in there with a Douay Maestro. Yeah, that's going to be incredibly fiddly, but we'll see how it works. No, I'm not going to peel it off. Okay, contact. <sighs> EXP3. Isn't that what I said? Well, that's clearly not what I did. <clears throat> One more time. This time with feeling. Oh, that's much better. There we go. Do not touch the heated bed. Is it heating? No. 22. All right, so. Okay, the extruder does not seem to be moving. Oh, right, probably because I don't have the hot end at temperature. All right, that's fine. So, let's see if auto homing works. We might need to speed that up a bit at some point, but <clears throat> I'm not going to get too fussed about it right now. Okay, so what I needed to do was move the uh, end stop in from the back. It was the back of the um, plastic here was flush with the this is what uh, 4040 rail, and so I just moved it ahead. Um, uh, that probably looks like about seven or eight millimeters, and that hopefully will help with the uh, print head alignment. Okay, so I've moved it a little too far forward. As so you can, no, let's move the bed up. Now the back goes, well, it goes just to the very edge. So I want to move that so I can go back a little farther. So one thing that would definitely be nice would be automatic bed leveling. So let's just see if out of the box it, it prints something. So preheating PLA, yeah, the bed seems to be heating up. It says that the nozzle is at 150. Bed's at 42, I'm trying to get to 45. The automatic bed leveling. <clears throat> Let's move this up and then we can see if we can extrude some filament. So in my haste to get this thing up and running, I didn't get very good footage of do the final configuration. So I'm going to try and do a bit of that now. If we go to prepare, auto home, what it does is it brings the hot end down to the carriage down and then it will trigger the z-axis limits so out of the box the the hot or the build plate is pulled down using these um, adjusting wheels and it's on springs so it will um, even if the hot end um, hits the plate it will it will flex on those springs but you can just adjust the height by using <coughs> these wheels. The next part is um, recognizing whether or not the 
um, the X and the Y directions are coming to the lower left hand corner of your build plate. Now remember that there's also this um, mat, uh, magnetic mat that sits on top of here and you don't want to really be printing over top of this stuff, you really want to be printing over top of the build plate because that's the part that's actually heating. So um, getting close as close as you can to this corner without um, going over that corner is a good thing to do. And you can see sort of where I've got that aligned just on the left hand edge of the build plate and if I move it to the right um, you'll see that it will line up with the right hand edge. Okay, so that's at 230 and x of 230 and now I'm going to move it in increments of one millimeter. And 235.0 and 235 millimeters is the leftmost position of the bed. And you can see that the bed is just slightly underneath um, that width. Um, so you don't get the full bed, um, aluminum bed, underneath the um, underneath the heater, which you can adjust in the software. You can adjust actually what the bed size is um, in the in the firmware. Similar sort of thing happens on the y-axis, but when it came out of the um, the box, the print head was actually well forward of the of the edge of the of the heated bed. So um, this print head was actually probably five or six millimeters, and to adjust that. What I needed to do was to adjust the end stop for the y-axis. So the the mounting, uh, the plastic mounting carriage for the y-axis end stop was flush with the end of this um, uh, 20, uh, 40, 40 aluminum rail. So if I I moved that forward a little bit so that when the y-axis hit the end stop it would actually not be protruding off the edge of the bed. So I got zero zero um, pretty much on the lower left hand corner of the build plate. Then what was left was doing a uh, leveling of the bed and that involved using the thumb wheels to adjust the height of the build plate. And so you can see that if you um, if you turn the thumb wheel, the build plate will rise or fall depending on which way you're turning. So so the build the uh, the head can move down a millimeter at a time using the user interface. Or uh, a tenth of a millimeter at a time. And now I'm at zero. So if I'm at zero, that should be the thickness of a piece of paper above the build plate. And so you just find a piece of paper, slip it under there, and then adjust the um, thumb screw until it just provides friction as you're moving the paper. You can feel it rubbing there, and then if I if I turn it clockwise, it pushes the, um, the plate up, and if I push it counterclockwise, turn it counterclockwise, it pulls the plate down. You don't want it loose; you want it just so it rubs. And then that is at z equals zero. So it just slips under there, and you can feel some friction. And you do that at all four corners and then you keep going around and it's an iterative process. If you adjust one corner it will slightly have an effect on the other corners um, and so you just do it as an iterative process until you've got it reasonab sorry, reasonably good for each of the four corners and that is um, leveling the build plate. And then that was uh, all I did in order to um, create the, these next prints that are um, coming up. 
Okay, so let's take a look at what is on the SD card that you have here. And you get the user manual, the as assembly instructions, which is what we were looking at. You also get a user manual, which uh, shows you all of the different things that you need to do, including the bed leveling. So if my explanation made no sense, then you can... Um, take a look at the explanation here. The, imagine this is a sheet of paper, um, <laughs> basically. So standard printer paper to assist with the adjustment, making sure that the nozzle lightly scratches the paper. What they mean by that is there's a little bit of friction there. So yeah, you get that. You get um, uh, the software. Um, so the Creality Slicer. And the Slicer's user manual. So uh, the Creality Slicer is actually um, Cura. And you can download the Slicer from the Cura website. Um, and then uh, drivers for the CH340 uh, um, serial chip, which is what's on the, uh, the board there, and FTDI USB drivers if you're using those. Some troubleshooting um, guides. Uh, if things are not working, check these things. Uh, maintenance flowchart, models. So there's a bunch of STLs that they include. Um, and then there are a few that are pre-sliced, so you don't even have to install a slicer. So there's a dog, there's a pig, and there's a cat. And then there's an instructional video. So. If this is totally annoying to you, then you can um, take a look at this instructional video and see um, what professionals do um, in terms of creating videos. Which is admittedly much nicer than mine. Probably much faster too, only six minutes. Yeah. I don't know why you would bother <laughs> watching this. Anyways, um, that's what's on the SD card that comes with your, with your, uh, with your printer. Okay, so init SD card does not format it. It just initializes to be able to, the software to read from the SD card. So, let's see what this cat looks like. And re really nicely dimensionally accurate prints, too. It's, it's wonderful. So, yeah. Uh, Creality. That, uh, that's pretty good. I know there's not a lot of contrast there, but I think you can see that those prints are coming out not too bad. That's the first layer there. And, uh, yeah, coming out looking pretty good, I would have to say. So, um, yeah, I'm going to give a big thumbs up to the uh, Ender 3. I'd recommend it for, as a budget printer, for sure. So far. I mean, I've only been using it for a few hours. But um, if this is what you get after a few hours of, of printing and I didn't do any tweaking other than leveling the bed so yeah I have to say it's a win at the uh, price amazing
So I hope that was useful, instructive, or whatever, entertaining. And uh, as always, thanks for watching. Talk to you later. Bye for now.